Today on What It's Like, back at Max Motive, to take a look at this 1969 AMC AMX. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this. You just obtained a car that you know nothing about, or perhaps you owned this car in the past and you were just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, loads of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. 1969 American Motors model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Ambassador, Hearst, Rambler, Javelin, Rebel, and then there was the AMX. AMC offered the AMX from 1968 to 1970. 68, 69, 70. AMX stands for American Motors Experimental. This was a two-seat muscle car that was based on the AMC Javelin, but it didn't have a rear seat and it had a shorter wheelbase. Also, the quarter windows were fixed on the AMX, whereas the Javelin was a traditional hardtop and it had the quarter windows they could go up and down. Built on AMC's junior car platform designed by Dick Teague. AMX competed with, well, all of the major muscle car contenders in the day. By 1969, AMC was sort of late to the party. Everybody else was on the field except for the Dodge Challenger. But so all of the cars that it contended with were Pontiac GTO, Dodge Charger, Ford Torino, Chevy Corvette. You could even throw the Mustang, Camaro, and Firebird into that mix. You could also throw in, you could throw in literally everything. The Chevelle, it competed with literally everything. 1969 saw some minor changes, like the base price increased $52, which is equivalent to $422.25 today. Magnum 500 Rally Road wheels were no longer chrome plated, but they had a stainless steel trim ring instead. Racing stripes available in five colors, revised interior door panels, better carpeting, leather upholstery was now optional. Real quick, we have to at least mention the super stock version. It came with a 390 cubic inch displacement V8 with twin Holley carburetors, 12.3 to 1 compression ratio. AMC rated the car at 340 horsepower, but the National Hot Rodders Association rated it closer to 420 horsepower. Car weighed 3,050 pounds. Best recorded quarter mile time was 10.73 seconds. You have to think this was a car from a conservative car company. AMC showed up to the muscle car party late, but they brought the goods, baby. Let's talk specs. 177 inches long, 71 inches wide, 51 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 97 inches. It weighs 3,000 pounds. Price for the base AMC AMX started at $3,297, which is equivalent to you spending $26,772.36 in the year 2022. And I like showing that number, the adjusted number, because it gives you perspective of how cheap cars were. If you pay the same price as the adjusted price, you didn't pay any more than the person that bought it brand new in 1969. Moving on to engines. There are three engines on offer. Starting in the basement, 290 cubic inch displacement V8, 4.8 liters. It's good for 225 horsepower, 300 foot-pounds of torque when mated to a four-speed Borg Warner T10. Manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 7.8 seconds. Quarter mile, 16.2 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 109 miles per hour. 13.6 miles per gallon is the average fuel consumption. When mated to a three-speed automatic, 0 to 60, 8.7 seconds. Quarter mile, 16.4 seconds. Top speed, theoretically, is 122 miles per hour, 13.1 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the middle engine option. 303 cubic inch displacement V8, 5.6 liters. It's good for 280 horsepower, 365 foot-pounds of torque. Compression, 10.2 to 1. When mated behind the Borg Warner T10 four speed transmission, 0 to 60, 6.3 seconds, quarter mile, 15 seconds, top speed, theoretically, 111 miles per hour. Moving on to the biggest and baddest engine that AMC had to offer was the 390 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.4 liters. It makes 315 horsepower, 425 foot pounds of torque. When mated with the four-speed Borg Warner T10 transmission, 0 to 60, 5.7 seconds. That puts it up there 
with the Pontiac GTO and everything else. It's one of the fastest, most underrated cars of the 1960s. Quarter mile, 14.4 seconds. Top speed. I couldn't find a theoretical top speed for this car, but average fuel economy was 11 and a half miles to the gallon on a good day. I saw as low as in the single digits. So notice this line that starts here, goes on top of the fender, goes across the door, comes back here past the quarter, kicks back up here to the top of the roof. Notice these, I've heard these called buttresses. Look at how this angles down into a fin and then it comes out the back. This car just has really clean lines. So coming over here, just look at the, how they designed the door handle. Looks like that. Here's what the door panel looks like. It's got vinyl material all over it, separated with some chrome accent pieces. This is the armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut. This is very Dodge-like. Look at how this is. So this is the lock and unlock. Here's the door handle to get out. The mirror is a toggle style mirror, but notice it's like, it's like halfway, not quite half, but it's located on the door itself. Generally they're up here. This one's back here. And this is a window crank for the, for the window. glass is slightly tinted it does not have a vent window it's also curved ever so slightly so see how it's curved coming down inside the pedal box itself here's the brake release here's the parking brake to engage it the high beam switch is located right behind it on the floor clutch brake gas pedal take a look at this interior Notice there isn't a rear seat. I always thought the quarter windows go down, but the quarter windows are fixed. How about that? There are coat hooks back there. There's a coat hook there as well as back on the other side. And that's what it looks like back there. So you could put extra storage stuff back there because these seats do you can move the seats out of the way and it, it works opposite generally you push up on this this one you push down on and then the seat moves that's how far the seat folds forward so extra storage space could be put back there this was amc's claim to fame it was actually nash started it and then rambor took it check this out so the seat folds completely flat, so you could stick a pillow here and sleep in your car. That's absolutely incredible. I never knew that the AMX did this. I knew that the Marlin did it, but I don't know when they stopped doing it. If you know when they stopped doing this in the comments section below, this is absolutely incredible. I never knew that this was a feature in the AMX. That's what the door sounds like when it closes. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. There, there's adequate space underneath the steering wheel, but that's okay because this one's got tilt wheel, so you can move it to the desired position. So now I got lots of room underneath the steering wheel. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left-hand side at the bottom corner. Weather eye, climate controls, headlights, windshield wash, as well as the wiper feature, clock, speedometer with odometer at the bottom of the gauge, tachometer to the right of it, fuel gauge and temperature gauge is also in the pod with the tachometer at the bottom of the gauge. Gear shift lever with the standard H pattern, four speed uh, stick, American Motors radio, lighter, ashtray. Above sun visors, that's what they look like. Here's my hand for reference to see how big these sun visors are. They're actually pretty good size. The rear view mirror, it actually hangs down lower than 
I thought it would, but it's actually got two adjustment points. So you can adjust it up and down and you can also adjust it back and forth. Like how cool is that? And it can go side to side too. It's got a daytime, nighttime feature as well. It's a switch on the back. Over here, the other sun visor. Here's what I look like. There's adequate headroom. I don't feel claustrophobic in this car, but the seats, the seats aren't that comfortable. They're okay. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. This is the camera that we use for all of the cinematic shots. Here is our glove box in question. There's a nice grab handle on top of the glove box. Yeah, it's not gonna fit in there. <laughs> Just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, it doesn't fit. This one's got a nifty little bar like you can separate things in. It's a storage folder thing. It feels like it's bake light plastic. Very interesting. I never saw a glove box like that. Coming back and getting into the trunk section. That is the trunk compartment. It's actually got a pretty big opening. I'm going to step back so you can see it. It's wide and it goes back quite a ways. You could probably fit two bodies in here if you really needed to. Lots of space. Coming to the under the hood section, the hood release is right here. Just lift up on it, one catch. So just check that out. There's the 390. This was this was a very, very underrated engine. This car could kick some serious butt. It would give the GTO a run for its money. Power brakes, dual master cylinder. It's got power steering. The alternator's way down in there. Windshield washer bag. On to the pros and cons. I'm getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, blue chip auto investments, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, exciting performance, no nonsense, two seats only layout, still relatively inexpensive, good parts sources, active club. Against it, 390 version has way more engine than chassis can handle. Tends to rust unless given care. Spotty construction quality. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title. First to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. I'm singing this note because it fits in well. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all of the support. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. The second way is check out our Facebook group. It correlates with this YouTube channel. It gives you the opportunity to share your ride stories, experiences, memories. Uh, if you're interested, the link will be in the description. So if I catch you on YouTube or Facebook, just know that I appreciate everything. And thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, toodaloo!